focus on three points, the content of the essay, prep, grammar, and advanced level vocab. Can you name it? Introduction. Introduction. Oh, yeah. This is not a well proportioned or even chat, personal chat, or even personal emails. So what's so specific about writing that makes you love it? Does any does anyone hate writing? Yeah. Are you complimenting me? Does anyone hate writing? Yes. Yes. No. Sort of. Sort of. Uh, no. You all love writing. Yeah. You can see that. You hate it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who said? Yes, I do. One yes. Say it out loud. There are specific challenges, really, serious. I would not be upset if you said I don't like writing that much and so on. Because I admit that there are several challenges associated with the purpose of writing. Okay? Mona, are you saying that you don't like it that much or you face difficulties and so on? Well, I like writing some junky stuff, but I can't really write something formal. Thank you very much. Yeah. We write, we chat. We draft emails, personal emails and personal uh, uh, messages, but these are all informal. But when, it, when it comes to academic writing, we're talking about a totally different issue. Okay? Let me take you through before we discuss in detail the challenges of writing. Let me take you through the outline or today's uh, uh, set of items scheduled for today's session. For part one, we're going to make a quick review on uh, the structure and the components of the essay, specifically the short essay. What's the meaning of a short essay? How long is, is a short essay? Okay. How long in terms of paragraph? We're not, we're not measuring by lines. This is very important. We're not measuring the essay by lines or by pages, never. We're measuring the essay and the length of the essay by paragraphs, because the paragraph is the unit of writing the essay, all right? So we're taking a quick review on the short essay structure and so on. How long is a short essay? How many paragraphs? Four, four three. Three. Can you name them, Maria? Can you name them? Introduction. Body paragraph one and only. The one and only, and then and a conclusion. So what's what's wrong with that short paragraph? Why aren't we happy with that? So a short essay. Why aren't we happy with that short essay, Mona? You can't really express yourself. You can't really talk about the topic. It's really short, so you have not have a lot of things to express. So you end up saying a few stuff. All stuff in one paragraph. But in the in case I have numerous. Topic-related ideas. I need to express and dedicate one body paragraph for each single main idea, right? That's why, at the space of our study, we are supposed to be learning what we call a longer essay, specifically a five-paragraph essay. A five-paragraph essay will include an introduction, definitely, and body one. Two, three, and a conclusion. Now, we're only required to write three body characters and a conclusion and definitely a well impressive or well impressing introduction. Right? So we're going quickly to review the structure of the essay, okay? And how can we develop the five body paragraph essay with a model? We're using a model from the book. By the way, the book is wonderful. This is the book we're using for our class today and for the rest of the semester. It's called Effective Academic Writing Free, and it is a wonderful book, okay? And by the end of the class, I will discuss with you the course assessment plan and correctly. What do we expect to do? How are we getting assessed? Types of exams, allocated marks and grades for exams and so on. I don't want to start by this because I don't want to consume your attention figuring out and calculating things and so on, right? Let's start by the definition of, sorry, let's
Let's start by the challenges of writing. Some of you said that the challenges of writing include the fact that we're supposed to come up with a formal piece of writing and we are actually the one we're actually used to informal. That's what friend, uh, phrases. Yes. And uh, don't we write as we speak? Don't we write as we speak? Sometimes we write as we speak. So you write as you think. And you're writing in a second language. You're not writing in your native language. Okay? And allow me to say that the language is the mood. You know the meaning of mood? Yes. The carrier. The, ca the carrier of the meaning. If I do master the language with all its ins and outs, yeah, punctuation, right? Uh, transition, uh, tenses, sentence structure, and so on, I might have, or definitely I have, great ideas, great ideas, wonderful ideas. But when I start communicating these ideas to the reader, the beauty of the ideas vanish because it's communicated, or they are communicated through a weak language, right? What else? How well, when you write something, even if, you, if you're sending a message to your friend, which is very informal, when you are writing something, do, do, are you present? No. We sometimes we send a message to any of our friends or our, fo our family, and then immediately after, hey, what did you mean? Fah. Yes. So we expect mm -hmm. some sort of what? What is the Miscommunication, misunderstanding. Specifically with written communication, Lee, because the writer, the author of the text is absent, right or not? And that's why sometimes I have to give him or her a call. Hey, what did you mean exactly by saying this? So the absence of the writer makes, makes the reader confused sometimes about meaning, because the meaning is either vague or unclear or misleading or it causes misunderstanding. And I don't have the writer to explain and, and illustrate on that. So I, I give you the piece of writing, and then I disappear. And that's exactly what happens when you write an article, okay? and the meaning is vague, and people judge you. And that's exactly what happens when you write an essay, and you submit the essay to me, and I start marking your essay and judge you. You're not there. You're not there to ask you, Ah, uh, what did you mean exactly by that? So I judge how clear or unclear your ideas, how repeated or uh, well developed and unrepeated your ideas, how innovative your ideas are, and that's the main major difference between spoken or verbal communication and written communication. The absence of the writer, as we're going to see in a minute. The challenges include that the writer is absent. So the reader is mainly uh, uh, trying to decipher and figure out the meaning on his own. صح. That's why they tell you that your essay has to be clear, not repetitive, communicating one single idea, one main idea prepared. Even more, because the writer is absent, because you give me your essay, you cannot repeat your essay. صح. You cannot have the essay back except after I judge your essay and give you a mark on it. صح. So the fact that you cannot retrieve your written communication makes it even far more difficult because in a conversation you can retrieve. Can you say, you can, can you say no, no, I did not mean that exactly. I meant so and so. صح. Vagueness, repeated ideas, and Fragmentation. You know the meaning of fragmentation? What's the meaning of fragmentation? Uh, what do we mean by fragmented ideas? Sorry? Can you say it? Lots of ideas. Unrelated. Put in one sentence. And that's what we sometimes judge as fragmentation and a run-on sentence. You know the meaning of run-on sentence? I start reading the paragraph waiting for one single full stop and I cannot find any unless I reach the end of the paragraph. See the point? And you start with an idea and then you shift in the middle. 
like saying, hey, I went yesterday to the movies. Did you see what she came today? Yeah. In the same conversation, but in face-to-face -face communication, people understand you because there is one security uh, factor, which is I see you, I can talk to you. There is an eye-to-eye -eye contact, but this is totally absent when you write. So you start with a uh, sentence, you shift in the middle, and then you shift to the first sentence that you ignored. That's what we call fragmentation of ideas. Everything is abruptly ended without proper illustration or without proper development, OK? Last but not least, I think. I said language eight. Yes. Why didn't I write language mistakes? There's a difference. What's the difference between the word errors and the word mistakes? the difference think I wrote errors language errors and not language mistakes Maybe. It's, 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 it's okay it the mistakes are on purpose right? uh, mistakes are on purpose or I realize that they are mistakes yeah. so I might identify them as wrong so how about errors that's what I just said right now how about errors does my mind identify them as errors? No. Negative. No, why? Mean, why? Uh, an error. An error means what so so you I don't mean, realize. I exactly. I don't realize that there is a mistake. And that's where the error comes from. Okay? And that's why most of the students come to me and say, Yeah, I wrote them up. Then I wrote a page and a half. I cannot take four out of ten for that lengthy as yes, he does not, his mind does not identify most of the essay because these are for him errors, errors. He does that undeliberately, unconsciously. He does not know that he makes mistakes. Do you understand? That's why I said language errors and not language mistakes. For all these challenges, I get or I receive a piece of, a piece of writing like this. It's final. And my optimum aim is that the course will take us through the phases, the processes needed for a proper academic writing, okay? And will teach us several types of essays. Argumentative essay is one of them. Cause and effect is another type of essay. Uh, compare and contrast, uh, uh, and other two types of essay. Okay. So my optimum aim is to free, to free your writing of all previous challenges, and of course language errors, to produce that straightforward argument. That straightforward argument that says. Your ideas are good. And your ideas are reaching the mind of the reader. And your ideas are meaningful and communicate a specific subject related or topic related idea. Do you understand? What's wrong with this final uh, argument? What's wrong with it? Yeah, I mean, when we see such a such a spiral shape, what's wrong with it? Yes, Mona. Yes, it does not lead to a specific direction. At least this line is going to a specific direction. And sometimes when you write as you think and without editing, you're writing. Sorry. One other thing that has to do with this spiral chain. You start it with a point. There's a nucleus. But this nucleus kept building webs. Do you know the meaning of a web? Yes. Circles. It moves on in circles. This means it does not develop. So it could be a repetition of the same idea. You go on and on and on talking about the same idea. It could be a repetition of similar ideas. So you don't go out. You don't think out of the box and bring innovative ideas to the topic. At the end of the day, you speak, sorry, you write as you speak in that spiral. Arguments, okay? Let me ask you this question and I'll give you a time to think about it. We all watch news. Sah? No. Do we? Sah? 
when there is an event or an accident, let me be, be more specific, an accident, how does a reporter report this accident? Think, can I think of any accident or any incident that you heard the news reporter reporting on it? How does he start? The, the give, give them time, you have a minute to think. Give them time. Introductions are no place for details. 
Carlos, introductions are no place for details. He's supposed to give us the brief, the real reasons behind the accident. Sah, how did it happen? Was he asleep? Was there as the, uh, bad weather conditions? That's why the airplane crashed. Sah, was the, did the airplane went? Uh, uh, there's something went wrong with the airplane, all of a sudden a jet did not move and so on, the motor, one of the motors did not start and so on. So he has to give us the specific reasons. And these specific reasons are called Ah, 
Do we understand the first two? Yani precise and formal. Yes, yani precise. Precise and very specific. Very specific. Do you know the meaning of the word off point? Yes. Yani very specific and not off point. Actually, it's to the point. Yani, I should not come here and talk about similar airplane crash, uh, crashes or the airplane crashes that happened during the last year. Unless I mentioned that in my this thing. Don't surprise your reader, okay? But I don't understand impersonal or objective. I don't understand it. Impersonal is the opposite of personal. Ty, what's the difference? Man, I can use I all through the S. Man, it's my S. And it's a free country, isn't it? Use I all the time, all through. Sah? That's an opinion. That's an opinion. When you state an opinion, sah? Do, do we sah, have some time to state our opinions? Or there is one type of essence called opinion essence. He wants you to choose one argument and stick to it. Still, who was to E by being in person? I cannot really grasp this. You don't have to be Let the objective. Because objective is the opposite of biased. Biased means taking one side. Because I love Suha, I will tolerate whatever wrongdoings she comes up with, and I'll support her. On the contrary, I have to be objective, weighing the two arguments, or the two people, or the two topics. And there are two topics, uh, and reasoning them effectively and without being biased. Now let's again focus about the, the, the word in person. Look at these two examples. Oh. Objective. 
Objective means you're not taking any side. No, you're not biased. If there are two ideas or two arguments, you are weighing, weighing it, weighing uh, and put them into balance. Thinking, analyzing the two arguments, and when you decide to support, you have your reasons to support. Solid reasons you thought of and could come up with, right? And that's why we have this table. The personal right, writing recaps, tells. A personal school, I'm a rock cinema bear who can film a game, right? And it uses the non technical vocabulary. It has the I at the center as the first sentence. Information comes from my own personal experience. Why, in fact, as you're going to see in your TMA, you're supposed to be using other information and other knowledge and other experiences by other writers, by other theorists, by other thinkers, okay? Personal feelings are viewed. Yeah, I, mean, I can continue on the first sentence say, I believe that we could have avoided this crash, airplane crash to happen if the pilot would have checked, in case the pilot had checked the weather forecast before flying the plane. That's yeah, my personal feelings, okay? Though actually you do not, you cannot permit the destiny, okay? Comments, 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 that's the verb, it comments, and it evaluates, and it analyzes. An idea or two, that's why we write an argumentative essay. It uses subject specific vocabulary. If we talk about a highly technical topic, I use the jargon. Jargon means the language related to that topic or that issue. I use the I only as an observer and a commentator. Usually it comes at the conclusion level. Okay, because you're concluding. And you might be ending your, your essay with an advice or a real opinion. صح? Information comes from a range of sources, right? Because we're using references, we're using journals, books, articles, magazine, and online sources. And it refers to what others say. Gives evidence. New ideas. Uh, the, what we call in Arabic is يعني not we supported. Uh, he's telling us that 5,000 were killed. How did you get that figure from? Where did you get that figure from? How did you get it? Is it in any big airplane? I mean, the, the Boeing, the maximum capacity is uh, like 400 or less. So how did you get that figure? This is a good message or something of that sort. It's not is not with references. And I mean, this is a very thorny issue, I think. Because if you don't support your writing with proper statistics and proper documented figures, this means that you're losing your credibility with your reader. Do you know the meaning of credibility? Yeah, and how honest, faithful, uh, correct, trustworthy is all what you have. Correct? Zoom in on that short essay, the thing that we were using, we were using the analogy of uh, the, the, the accident before. But before that, we take five minutes to stretch our legs before we start this video. The five minutes break. Yellow. I need the same number to come back to the class.
I mean, I don't expect that all the answers should be correct on Halloween. So we so start right. about underlining. Yes. Underlining is very important because it tests, it tests one thing about can you really identify accurately where does the book start and where does it end? Can you accurately identify where do the background sentences interact with? Why am I saying background sentences and not background sentence? Why am I saying background sentences plural and not a background sentence? It has some ideas falling into the background of the book. No details whatsoever because all the examples, all the details, all the illustrations are to be seen from the body characters. Fine. Again, why am I saying sentences and not sentences? Uh, why not? For it's enough to speak one sentence, actually. Background sentence is enough. Actually, the book, then the background sentence, and then the pieces statement, not sentence. It's a very specific. Uh, how long is the statement? A sentence two, three, how long? Have you read this before? What is this? The president's statement. Give me another word. Replace statement with it. So if I replace the word statement with the word speech, definitely statement is not one sentence. And then you need the president of the flash food heart and then it disappears. Correct? So definitely when he mentions a basis statement, this means that it could be one sentence or I 
respect the introduction so much, and I respect the conclusion even more, because when you are patient enough and accurate enough to introduce, properly introduce the topic to your people, think about how it catches attention in the book. Think about the background sentences that you're going to mention about the topic, and draft a will sealed thesis statement. I know that you care about your reader. I know that your essay is uh, a, a good piece of writing. Even before I start reading the body paragraphs, the body paragraphs can come out not as beautiful as the introduction or the conclusion. The conclusion is very important. Most of you dear women ask, yeah, two lines, خلاص, and I got bored. Deal and handle the conclusion as a well-respected paragraph. It recaps, you know the meaning of recaps? It recaps all what you have said and mentioned in your essay, specifically the thesis statement, because the thesis statement tells us what is the all at the whole essay is about to discuss. Sah? Statement advice, given advice, or a stated opinion and then the main ideas. So from the mere looking at your essay, I would say I would you would lose marks because this is not a well proportioned essay. Yani not a well proportioned essay. Do you know the meaning of proportion? Do you know the meaning of portion? Portion. And proportion means uh, uh, division, percentage, level of intensity, and so on. I would look at it and say, ha, oh, he's a lousy writer. Why? Because it seems that he had uh, a difficulty writing a proper introduction, a proper conclusion, and developing the ideas in his body paragraph. While he talked a lot, Presumably, full of repetition. I did not read yet. I, I hope not. But it presumably full of repetition in body paragraph. This means that you could not develop your ideas equally. If you can develop your ideas equally, you will write well proportioned as. But what do you mean? Any active? That, that paragraph, for example, ten lines here, and the Bible has to be exactly ten lines. I did not mean that. But it will set a very negative image of your skills as a writer when you write an introduction of three lines, and then body paragraph one, 11 lines. And then body paragraph two, five lines. Do you understand? And then body paragraph three, 16 lines. This sets a very negative image about your skills as a writer. All right? Now, we go back to the, the essay that I assigned you. Some people had difficulty, some of you had difficulty underlining the, 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 the components of the essay. Sah? Did you read it? Where is the hook? Where is the hook statement? Sorry, your, your name? What's your name? Narime. Say. Okay. Mariam, go ahead and shoot. Where's the hook? The hook. Sorry? Can you raise your voice a bit? Where is it? In body paragraph one, two, or the last one? The last one. In hook. First one. There are two components that do not change their places in the essay. Whatever. In hook. For very first sentence of the introduction. You cannot miss it. Learning how to write. With thesis statement, very last sentence, or sentences of the introduction. But, but the, top, the topic sentence of the body paragraphs can change their places. We are accustomed to see the topic sentence at the very beginning of the paragraph. Huh? That's why it's called topic sentence. But sometimes it comes in the middle. 
and sometimes it comes in the end. And we have an exercise on that. You said that it's not catchy, صح? صح? In order to judge the book statement, I have to read the title or the topic prompt of the essay. Look at that title, Becoming an Academic Writer. Let's go through the book. Learning how to write an academic essay, oh my God. So it reiterates, it repeats key words from the title. Is that correct or not? Taban, taban. Learning how to write an academic essay is essential for students who are planning to attend college. There's one very important, actually two very important features about this book statement. Our one of them, which is it repeats keywords from uh, the title. Another one, e. It sets e. It's precise. It's precise. It sets e. It sets heading. It sets the purpose of the essay. Oh, like, why is it important? So it sets the importance of the academic writer. Why? It's important for the people or the students who attend college or university. But I don't like this book. I agree with Maria. It's not really catchy. How a few other forms of the book? Yes? No? Yes? Yes? Do we have other forms of the book? Yes? What could be other forms of the book? A question form. Question. Probably. Why is a question catchy? Why? Thank you very much because you're, the essay is replying and provides a response or an answer to this question. And because people's minds are usually challenged by the question. But turn this hook into a question. Turn this hook into a question. Can we? Can we turn this hook into a question? Yes? 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 Learning how to write an academic essay is essential for students who are planning to attend college. I need a question. For a question out of it. Are you ready? Should I choose? Are you are you ready? I'll give you half a minute to get ready. Think carefully. Change this statement statement to a question. The hook. The hook. Uh, Alina, can you do you want to shoot? Go ahead. Hold, 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 I'm typing. How to write? Ha. Ha. Yes. Eh? Yes. All right. Tab, look at. Does, any, does anybody have a different phrasing? A question for, but it's a different phrasing. Yes, Mona. How to write academic essay. Perfect. Thank you very much. Academic essays. Uh, regarded. Allow me to add this word, regarded essential for students who attend college. And we agree that usually questions are very intriguing, intriguing to the mind. صح? Which question do you find more challenging, more intriguing? Because it sits from the very beginning, it hooks up your attention. And it sets the importance of essay writing. How important are they? We're going to discover that when we read along the essay. Right? Right, guys? Perfect. You did a good job. Now, I want you to tell me where does or where do the background sentences start? 
and where do they finish? Min fein ba? Min awal fein? Min awal those professors. Do we all agree? Yes. Uh, what What does he do when when he started with most professors? He's talking about the academic writing process background. Most professors require critiques of books and films. Sah? How many essential? I'm talking about the background of the used. How are they used since the very uh, old times? Because this is like a tradition, a classical tradition in the academic life. Sah? Those professors stop me. Stop me when you feel like this is the end of the background sentences, right? Those professors require critiques of books and films. Any yani critiques? Analysis. Criticism. Sah? Those professors require critiques of books and films, research papers, and formal reports related to the content of their courses. When I first started... Begin? Begin? I, I want to read more. <laughs> when I first started college, this is the start of my thesis statement. Akid. Akid. Yes. No, no, I'm upset. Read carefully. No, this is not the start of the thesis statement. La Yumki. La Yumki. Starting maybe when he started focusing on the The thesis people. statement, Busu, you cannot miss the thesis statement in that introductory paragraph because it, it starts with an action verb. Huh? I'm giving you a clue. It starts with an action verb. To achieve this goal, thank you very much, girls. To achieve this goal, you will do so and so and so. How many so's? Three. Which means I'll do three strategies. If I illustrate on each one, I could have come up with a separate body paragraph, but because it's only one paragraph essay, he wrapped up and discussed all the three ideas in one single paragraph. Again, the thesis statement starts with an action verb to achieve this goal. I focus on three points. I don't like the writer of this essay. He uses I a lot. Do you agree? Do you agree? He's personal. He's very personal. Do you agree? No. Yeah. Wish. Why? Why? Ah, uh, he uses I a lot. This does it affect the meaning? Whoa! If we look at use the use of I, isn't he talking about the personal anecdote, i.e., a personal experience? Yes. 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 It's all his own personal experience attending college. And we said that sometimes we're allowed to use the I if we are expressing an opinion, Sah? or if we are talking about the personal experience. So the guy is not mistaken at all, right? Again, so the hook ends at college, sah, four, right? And the thesis statement starts with, to achieve this goal, ha, you will do, I will focus on three points. The content, correct grammar, ha, advanced vocabulary level, right? So what's between the hook and the thesis statement? What do we call it? Background sentences? Are you are you convinced? Yeah. Is he talking about the background of academic writing? No. Yes? No. 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 I don't feel it. I don't feel it. Look at them carefully. I don't feel it. We how many sentences are there? One, two, three. So? Three, so, it, so the, it's not one sentence. You could have different labeling, right? Mish background. Most professors require critiques of books and films, research papers, and formal reports related to the content of their courses. Background. Let's move. So we answered here the first, the first one. The, the thesis statement is to achieve this goal, I focused on three points the content of the essay, correct grammar, and advanced level vocabulary. And the thesis, it states what 
the entire essay is talking about. Sah? Did we see these ideas elaborated on in the next body paragraph? That body paragraph? No. No, he did not elaborate on them. Do you know the meaning of elaborate? Illustrated on them. Yes? Yes or no? Did he mention them? Yes? Not, not each one in a separate body paragraph. Remember that this is a one paragraph essay. Did he mention them? Look at the body paragraph again. Yes. Yes. He talked about the three of them. He did not dedicate one paragraph for each idea because this is a short essay, one paragraph essay. Okay? And we'll compare that to another essay in a minute, all right? Fine. Where is that topic sentence? As soon as I started to write for college, I realized that college writing was different from the writing I was used to doing, yeah, any personal writing. Is it a topic sentence? Is it? No. It's, why did he chose it? Is it only because it came at, as the first sentence of the next paragraph? Look, I didn't hear that. I'm saying something. I'm saying that this is the topic sentence. But I don't know why. Can you can you know why? Look at it carefully, Kevin. How does it relate to the thesis statement, Yes? It says that the difference of how we used to write and how it really is supposed to write. And that's why we're going to to include these academic features, right? And that's why the rest of the paragraph is discussing these three academic features for academic writing, proper grammar, advanced vocabulary, and the content of this, right? I don't want to discuss that. Uh, the conclusion that much now because we know that it sums up the ideas that were mentioned in 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 it sums up the ideas that were mentioned in the essay we're moving now to the five paragraph essay can you see that lovely essay on page five let's look at the time look at the time Look at the title. It's the same title of the short essay. So what, what's new did he add to it? We're going to see. Look at this. I did something in that essay. Very Can you see? I'll, I'll minimize the scope in order to be able to see the whole of it. I color-coded it. I color-coded it. And when I color-coded it, there's a meaning for each color. There's a meaning for each color. I will not discuss the colors now, but I want you to identify the different features of the essay. Read it carefully. Tell me where is the hook? Where does it start and where does it end? And where does the uh, background sentences start and where do they end? And where does the thesis statement start and end? Topic sentence and topic any answer? Answer this set of questions. If you do that properly well, I promise that this will be the last exercise we do and then we'll discuss the assessment plan. Do it well, focus, concentrate, be proud about yourself and your achievement. Answer these questions that are discussing this essay. Again, I believe the two brains are better than one. This is on page five, goes on to page six, and then the answer is you're cheating. You're cheating. I'm mistaken to leave it. You have five minutes.
first point, which is, which is, uh, the content, صح? The content. Look at the thesis statement, tell me where the thesis statement, and where does it start, fail? To achieve, yes, exactly, as I did here, so I was correct. Busu, the thesis statement starts with, to achieve. What is he going to do in order to achieve this first? He will work on the content. Look at the act, the, the body paragraph one. Is it talking about the content? Yes. Different from means the content is different. Right? And he's using what we call transitions, like therefore, in contrast. He's contrasting what to what? Personal emails, family emails, or writings to friends or family to academic writing. So he's contrasting a, the content of. So he is faithful. He developed the first idea in the thesis statement that he actually mentioned. Yes. He passed. He passed. What's the second idea he's supposed to be discussing? Grammar. Correct grammar. So where is it? Up front. I realized that I had to improve my, my understanding of grammar. So he mentioned the first, the second. Uh, point and he illustrated in it on it in a dedicated body paragraph. Is the whole body paragraph discussing grammar or not? That second body paragraph is it discussing purely, purely, like the first body paragraph is discussing content purely. Let's see his last and third body paragraph. What is it, what what is it supposed to be discussing? How? Advanced like specifically. Advanced level of vocab. Let's see. Well, I, I'm not sure. It's not upfront stated. Where's the topic sentence? It seems yeah, I mean, if you could guess. I highlighted all the topic sentences in velvet, صح? So it seems that the topic sentence changed its position. I said that the topic sentence is accustomedly to be found at the beginning of the paragraph, right? But sometimes it comes in the middle and some other times it comes at the end. So he says, I soon realized that academic writing requires a much more sophisticated vocab. Sophisticated is another word for advanced. So actually he mentioned it. He discussed it. Does the whole paragraph discuss advanced and sophisticated vocabulary or it discusses something else, Kamel? Yes, it's dedicated to vocabulary, right or not? Yes. This guy did a very important he was faithful. He did not deviate. Yani, he did not go off point. In none of the body paragraphs. He mentioned at the beginning content and the first paragraph was about content. And then grammar, second body paragraph was about and last advanced or sophisticated and the last body paragraph was about couldn't he has couldn't he have changed the sequence of ideas? What if he started the body body paragraph one with grammar? What would be wrong with that? Yes. In the thesis statement. Yes. Stick to the same sequence because. The reader has to follow the same sequence you have stated. Do not confuse your reading. Do not mix up your read. A lot or the image of vocabulary first or the second point. Let's see. And then you find the older reading sleep. Okay? Right? Okay. I will stop here in today's class the content, but I still need to discuss the curriculum and the assessment. And you have
our homework. We need to read and do the exercises. Read, do the exercises, because the rest is editing mainly. From page uh, eight to page uh, 25. Yes, 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 yes. The, the book is enjoyable. Yes, yes. The book is enjoyable. Dedicated 
two. Yes. Second in class writing assignment. With an essay and properly an editing exercise, an editing portion. Try. Mm -hmm. One of you might say, Ika, there are too many exams, and I will miss the first in class. Yeah, I am not Well, I will miss the second in class. But I am And I have to be better. We have to big fat if. Can you get big fat if? Because the exam is not um, an objective exam that much. Yani, yeah, objective. Yani, yeah, you're not using MCQ. Had to choose well, true or false. Let them. They have to. Which means you will lose marks. Active. I will lose marks. So don't do that to yourself. Okay? I don't mean you will lose marks in that sense, but. You will lose marks. So don't do anything that you might respect the assessment. But how do we get to know about this scale? The calendar is put to you on the LMS. The academic calendar of the course is put to you on the LMS. Do you know how you usually have a password? No. The LMS. If not, you call me with this and we have and she will provide you with them. Essential, important, highly recommended. And what will be the point of time is to be one time? Questions. I'm waiting for your questions. Questions. Do you find the course easy? Thank you very much. I'll take the attendance because I'm not familiar yet.